goes on to write, we are so inclined to overvalue outcomes, efficiency, even those of us who know quite well that we serve a God of profligate grace, a Lord who rejoices in pure nard squandered on the Messiah's feet, a creator who strews across the field and through lives full many a flower to blush unseen and wasted sweetness on the desert air. Love is worth more than many ledgers. Obedience, whatever the cost, is never wasted. In the right side world of the kingdom of God, sacrifice is honored. And sacrifice, with sacred at its root, means to give up something for something else far less worth. It means that the books don't balance, not on this earth, and that's okay with God. And as the prophet Isaiah noted, I've labored to no purpose. I've spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with God. Some years ago, a philosopher friend, a devout Christian, a conservative theologian, who has publicly debated leading atheists, described listening to a man who had been, for 25 years, a missionary in Islamic lands and had not won a single convert for Christ. I thought, what a waste, said my friend. What a total waste of this man's life. And then I felt an immediate and powerful sense of rebuke. He's an intellectual, not in the least inclined to emotionalism. If he says he felt rebuked, he was rebuked. And for what? For wishing Muslims had converted to Christianity? For wishing a missionary had been blessed by seeing the fruit of his labor? Of course not. He was rebuked for forgetting that God does not tally as we tally. He was rebuked for dishonoring one weary man's long faithfulness, as was I, the writer of this article, for presuming to weigh so quickly and thoughtlessly an old woman's life, a young one's death, and a young man's birth. Amanda Will. John writes, we are children of God, that is what we are. And dear people of God, children of God, I want you to be amazed with wide-eyed wonder and jaw-dropping power, the, the, the beauty of that truth. We are God's children. And you have intrinsic worth. You are clothed in God. We are going to see um, God won great and glorious day. And now it says in the Bible that there will be no tears. I don't know what they, God's going to do about tears of joy. I think He'll allow those in heaven. Our eyes will be wide open, our jaws will drop, and we'll be in the presence of God. That deepest desire which the psalmist wrote about 3,000 years ago to be in the house of the Lord and dwell upon His beauty all the days of my life, we'll be gazing on His beauty and we'll be saying, as this woman said, there he is, pointing to the man with tears in her eyes. We'll be saying, there he is, God. Tears will be in our eyes. But then look around, and there will be her and him, all of us there together. Pay attention to these people, the ones in your pews. We're going to see Jesus together. We're children of God. That is who we are. We've been covered in the blood of Jesus. God himself took our salvation into his own hand. And through the work of his son Jesus, we've been promised a resurrection. And we have been made worthy of heaven. And we will be in heaven. And we will be pure. What a joy. Let's begin treating each other then already in the light of that promise. Um, Eric Ness, his funeral is today, All Saints Day. Gus Warnes died this morning. Uh, both of them non-members of our church technically. Many of you may know Gus. He has come and worshiped with uh, Mark and uh, Diane often members of our church, 
Eric Ness, you may not remember, especially if you haven't been a member of the church for the past 15 years, um, or, or have joined in the past 15 years, I should say. I remember Eric as a little baby in a, a holder that you, you, know, you hold and you put on the ground. And I say the ground because Carla, the mother, was on the scaffolding down in our lobby creating a fresco. That was 17 years ago when I came as pastor. That's how I remember Eric. Eric has since grown into a young man, and he just recently died in a car accident. Uh, Gus died at 92. To die young at 17, to die old at 92, neither of these lives have any more value than the other. They're all in God's economy, His justice, His plan. All of us have intrinsic value because God has created you. God has redeemed you, and you're clothed in God, and you are his child. Now, those who mourn the passing of loved ones, and many names are mentioned today, uh, periodically tears may well up in our eyes as we remember those names, and we can't wait for that blessed reunion, and we wish we could embrace them and hug them. Can't we begin hugging each other now? Before death forces that issue on us, before we begin then, after their passing, to see their great value and blessing to our life, let's begin even now to embrace each other, to love each other, to see God, our relationship with God in each other. You are my brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ. Together we're God's children, and that is what we are. May God's people love each other, be connected to each other through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen.